Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Lolo for those of you who didn't already know. So today we're here for some, you know, not so like chirpy, lighthearted, like ha ha ha. And so I'm just kind of here to talk to you guys about what's going on in the world and like it just really is a lot. Like I don't know if I'm the only one that's just sitting here like what the hell is going on? Like what is actually going on? This whole year has just been a bad dream. Like I feel like there's just been scandal after scandal after crisis after issue after problem and i don't know when it's gonna end so we are currently dealing with a worldwide pandemic and i never really thought i would see one of these in my lifetime if i'm being honest but here we are like i'm super surprised that we are dealing as nigerians we are dealing with something that the rest of the world is simultaneously dealing with i think that's really crazy um and i wanted to come on here and let you guys know this this virus it's deeper than rap it's real it is very real and it's very contagious like i can't stress this enough the virus is real it's not a hoax it's not a scam they're not overhyping it like it does what it says on the tin like it fucks up your lungs um the reason why i feel it's important to make a video is because i actually feel like we're being lied to in nigeria and i think it's important for you guys to just sort of have that back of your head that you know the government's saying five cases eight cases or whatever but the testing centers for corona the testing center for coronavirus in nigeria there's only one and for the people that i know have gone there i've tried to get tested and just sort of seen like it's it's the testing center in itself is a breeding ground for the virus like it's so congested it's it's like it's like that and there's only one so you can imagine the volume of people going in there every single day um, and not everybody can get tested so there are a lot of people that should be tested who can't so i feel like in nigeria there's certain people who just be like oh cba like oh they're gonna quarantine me yeah but like i'm not so i think there's a lot of people who could potentially have it who are asymptomatic young people and also people who knowing that they'll recover just self isolate at home and never say they have it but i never tell the people they've come in contact with so don't be surprised if you you know people just start popping up here and there because they've interacted with somebody who hasn't um, said that they had it. Um, one of the Ghanaian girls who has it spent three days in Lagos on, well, spent some days in Lagos on her journey to Ghana. So where did she stay? Who did she speak to? Like, what did she touch? Like, that's one person who was here for an extended amount of time who isn't a victim and isn't a number in our statistics, but definitely infected people. So that's just something to really think about like just because they're saying like you, you can think it's contained i can almost guarantee you that it's you no know, i can assure you it's not contained like people are still doing any and everything so people are still going to um you know thousand people weddings and people are still doing their normal activities and i just think it's really 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 dangerous so i'm coming on here to just implore you guys like if you're thinking of going to the club sit you at home if you're thinking of going like to an ashwebiyo and bed type thing like i would urge and implore you to stay at home and the reason i say this is because even if you get it and you're asymptomatic you have it and you're asymptomatic or you get it and you recover there are old people like there are we have we all love our grandparents like massively so don't put someone else's grandparents at risk don't put your grandparents at risk and at the same time like nobody like illness doesn't show on the face so for all i know i could have a respiratory issue do you understand i could have like a respiratory dysfunction and just not know it or a cardiovascular problem or i mean god forbid but you know you just never know so there are a lot of young people who are saying oh if i get it i'll be fine if i get it i'll be fine but you actually don't know if like you're one of those people that's gonna be like oh shit like this thing actually took me for a loop and now i have pneumonia and i'm on freaking ventilators like that could very easily happen to you just to give you a brief history an explanation of how the virus spreads basically in order for you to get the virus it needs to be you need to get into one of your mucous membranes so your mucous membranes are your eyes your nose your mouth and that's why they tell you not to touch your face a lot because if you touch a surface then you touch your face i mean chances are you're gonna transfer the virus to your face if you had it on your hands already um i think the major conversation now is sort of like what's next like what what are we gonna do like what's next you know what are we gonna do going forward um and I think this is twofold. Like, I think on the one hand, like the government, um, the government needs to be looking a lot into 
limiting social gatherings and stopping social gatherings over a certain number or stopping them all together you know if you're not going to close down the schools just yet then make sure you have provided sanit like sanitization materials for the public schools who already can't afford and vast majority of the things they need to afford um make sure there's proper education of your public so that we're aware like make sure that we are locally producing masks and things that we would need you know gloves things like that i mean why are we not locally producing hand sanitizers like we have all these factories and things in at our and in the industrial areas of papa like why have the government not mandated one of those factories to start producing alcohol and ethanol and things like that to sanitize the streets and sanitize the public transports and you know things of that ilk is kind of what i think they should be doing and i'm hoping that this travel ban and not allowing our government officials to sort of travel out of the country for healthcare is going to force them to to invest locally into our system when like you know god forbid but not god forbid but god forbid their wives and children and family members start falling ill they will have no if those people don't have british or american passports you can't go anywhere because no country is accepting you so you then have no choice but to put money in your own system and make sure that your system is able to take care of your loved ones and that will fortunately for the rest of us trickle down to us having better healthcare um in terms of us as in us me and you like i don't know all the answers i don't know what exactly to do i know that i am drinking my vitamin c one a day at least um i'm trying to stay rested you know because if i do develop the virus and i am an asymptomatic i want to recover so from today i'm taking it easy i'm going to be at home i'm going to be sleeping resting building up my immune system keeping my body like at its maximum of most most powerful and most strong because i don't know how long this is going to go on for i don't know how much strength my body is going to need i don't know um a part of me like this may be kind of like an unpopular opinion but if we're all going to get it a part of me wants to get it earlier rather than later so um it's out the way and i'm not one of those people like dealing with it when like all the hospitals are like rammed up um but then again that's only saying if we're all going to get it because the uk has said that they expect 80% of people to get it so that's a pretty high number the next thing is that, yeah like i said i'm staying hydrated like not just with my vitamin c like drinking a lot of water like also think about it it's it's the symptoms are flu like so i'm just treating myself as if i already have a flu staying hydrated keeping my um my electrolytes up boosting my immune system drinking a lot of water drinking my vitamin c things like that i think are supposed to be helpful um there was a recent article that came out today again i don't know for a thousand percent how true it is but there's something about this virus not surviving quite as long in hot temperatures so they were saying things like if the virus does get into your nose or whatever it takes a while for it to get into your lungs um so that's when you should be doing things to keep your body your temperate your body temperature kind of not body temperature but in your nose so they said um like what's that stuff you do with hot water and steam hot showers saunas and so much even to put a hair dryer up your nose like there's that too um tomorrow i'm going to take off my nails because underneath your nails like a lot of bacteria can sort of just stay here and with constant washing of hands like i just don't want to miss anything and have something sort of hiding in here so i'm just going to take these off um my fake lashes are pretty much all off and when they once they're off i'm not going to put on another set because your lash technician is like this and so if she has it girl you going to get it so i'm not getting my lashes done this is the olive oil i'm going to put in the hot water just to clear out my lungs and apparently eucalyptus oil is just supposed to be good for your lungs so is that um I also bought an inhaler because it's a respiratory disease and I don't know how this thing is going to go and like I said I don't know how long it's going to last for so god forbid something would happen in the middle of the night and I genuinely couldn't breathe I know that this is something or I was experiencing crazy shortness of breath from what I understand these symptoms kind of just go overnight so I'm going to have this with me so that I can just if I need to get to hospital or something so if you have any asthmatic um relatives or anything they are really high risk because their lungs already don't function at the same capacity as the rest of us so please make sure you stock up on inhalers like they have one with them all the time keep on with you too like i have siblings that are asthmatic so i'm also keeping this with me for them also um another thing is they're saying chloroquine is supposed to be a, a 
base ingredient of the vaccine. A lot of people are allergic to chloroquine. Please check and make sure you are to know if you are allergic. So if God forbid anything were to happen, you would be able to say, please, I can't take this because of chloroquine. And then they would hopefully be an alternative for you. And yeah, um, let's all just practice some social distancing, self-quarantining, self-isolation, you know, whatever it is that we all need to do to keep ourselves like safe. Just be safe and are on the side of caution, guys. Don't don't take any unnecessary risks. Don't don't just go to places like I know we're all gonna get cabin fever and whatever, but read a book, make some new friends on the internet. Practice your makeup skills, hell, make a baby, I don't know. But just don't go out unnecessarily. And I really hope they close down the schools. I know a lot of private schools have started doing that and I hope the public schools do it too. And if you're somebody who thinks that you have symptoms, please stop quarantine. Like I, I know someone who traveled and came back and she said she couldn't quarantine because her office wasn't like her. And I was like, that's what, like, priorities. Like, how mad is your office really gonna be if you're like, guy, like, I don't wanna, you know? And best believe somebody that I knew from my office had just traveled to come back. If you don't want to self quarantine, I'm going home. Like, you're not about to infect me just because you want to be at your job. Like, I'm sorry. There's bigger things. Like, your job is still good. We need to stay alive. Like, if you work for the next four weeks and then you pop off and die, what good is that to anybody? The company's still gonna have to hire somebody else. So, don't get locked in that trap of, oh, it's Nigeria. My boss isn't gonna understand. Make him understand. Make her understand. Like, your life. My life, the life of everyone around you is of absolute utmost importance and I just think we all need to take this super, super seriously, stick together, be careful and stay safe, guys. Oh, but of course, stay tuned for Quarantine TV. Some great quarantine content and I'm gonna be at home just filming and show you guys what I'm getting up to at home, maybe, or what, I don't know what the content's gonna be, but yeah. See ya, for real now. <laughs>